So my name is Larissa Sawyer and we have uh, Cedar Creek Farms. So it's a 100 acre farm uh, in Amaranth, Ontario. And my husband bought it 10 years ago. So this is his 10th year owning it. So I, I didn't grow up on a farm. Um, I grew up in the city, but moving to the farm and, and having this be my life, I, I would never not live on a farm. It's so quiet and it, it's so peaceful. To be able to, to have the wildlife here and, and the sounds and the birds and the bees, and it, it really, really is a, you know, a stress relieving environment to be in. Um, so we bought it as a cattle farm and we've slowly been converting it to a fruit orchard. Um, we also do want to have livestock, uh, cattle and, and chickens and pigs and all those things. And basically we want to have a little bit of everything to, for, for food. Last year we put in um, swales along our whole property, kind of like a little ditch. And then what they do with the dirt from the ditch is they kind of build it up and they call that a berm. Our area, Amaranth, is extremely wet and it's very low. So the water would come down, you know, hits the soil and it compacts it. And it basically renders our soil kind of useless. So by doing these swales, um, what we've done is created kind of a waterway throughout our property. The water will come down, it hits the swale, and as our property has this really gradual slope, the water will fill in one swale and then over, eventually kind of fill over to the next swale and the next swale and the next swale. Just kind of slowly watering your entire property from one swale to another. And by doing that, you're allowing the water to stay on your property instead of giving it away. We've actually been able to plant trees on our berm and no one else in Amaranth has any fruit trees because it's just too wet. So we're saving our water and, and basically watering our, our farm. I think our uh, biggest project that we liked was, was our um, crossing for the waterway. So the reason that this was so important to us is our back hay field, we currently weren't able to get over to it. So what we'd have to do is in order to get the hay off of the field, we had to have our neighbor farmer come through his back field and come in hay. And the problem with that is that he could only come through before his own crop came up. So we would always have to hay uh, very, very early on. And unfortunately, by doing that, we would destroy the habitat of the bobolink. So by doing this crossing, we've allowed it to be able to cross whenever we want. So now we can hay late, which will allow the bobolink to nest and have their babies. Uh, for some reason, my kids just love the bobolink. I don't know specifically why, whether it's their color or their, their song, but they really love that bird. And whenever we'd walk uh, after dinner and go for a nature walk, we'd see them everywhere. And it was so nice that we knew that that's where they were living. And you know, to know that we'd have to tear their habitat down, for me, was just you know, so upsetting. So being able to give them that habitat for that time was really nice. So our personal motivations for introducing Starfit uh, to our farm is that we wanted to really diversify uh, what species we had on our farm. So whether that be plants or animals or the insects, we wanted a variety of different uh, species on the farm basically to help um, you know, with, with bug population and when it comes to the pests for our fruit trees, but also bringing in beneficials like the bees and, and those things that will help pollinate the fruit trees, as well as any of the beautiful species that are growing in the forest that are just nice to look at and, and be able to have see butterflies come on the farm and, and the birds and just being able to sit and watch it and, and hear them is, is awesome. So we have a serious passion for fruit. I love fruit, my kids love fruit, and we just thought, you know what, why are we buying you know, fruit from the grocery store when we could be growing it ourselves? So we wanted to grow anything we possibly could, basically, um, in our zone. So we've done a mix here. We kind of call it our test orchard because we wanted to see what will grow here best. So we've done a mix of apples, plums, cherries, pears, and some nuts, and then some small bushes as well to see what's gonna grow well, and then in the hopes that in the future, we'll plant another orchard knowing what varieties we're happy with. So in our orchard, what we've done is we've done rotational mowing. We mow the strips in between the trees at different intervals, and it's to allow um, certain flowers to grow at certain times. There's many different kinds of flowers, so what we do is we let everything, you know, kind of grow naturally. It brings in, you know, the birds, the bees, all those things to naturally help us pollinate the trees. And then that way the thistles get to grow and then it's bringing all these beneficials to the farm. 
Last year we put in um, a bunch of trees. We've done two kind of types of tree projects. We did reforestation as well as a windbreak. So this one's our windbreak project. So we've done a row of cedar and behind that we have some spruce and a mix of some hardwood trees like maple and oak and those things. It's really important for us to have, uh, again, a diversification of these trees. It's going to help bring species into this buffer strip as well as help protect other species on the property once the trees have grown. I'd absolutely recommend SARFIT to other farmers. I think it's an absolutely great program. They were able to take the ideas in my head of the projects that I'd love to do and by, through the funding of SARFIT, I was able to put those projects in place.